glass eels travel at night, using the incoming tide to help them move upstream to their final destination in lakes and ponds. Dip netters have to time it just right. The flow of elvers peaks just before high tide. Those using fike nets have more leeway. They can collect their night's harvest from these large, funnel-shaped traps when convenient. Jessica Card works at an Ellsworth used car dealership, but scoots out occasionally to check her net on the Union River. I just love everything about it. It's, it's exciting. You never know what you're going to get. I mean, you could come down and have 20 eels or you could have 20 pounds. You don't know. Jessica's tending her net this afternoon with the help of her husband, Jeremy. Only 425 individuals have the coveted Elver fishing license in Maine. This year, 13 new licenses were made available. 2,600 Mainers applied. Jessica's had her license 17 years and has seen the market explode. It would just be a little bit to get us just a tad ahead at the end of winter, but then it just, I don't know, all of a sudden went nuts. <laughs> the card's income had always largely depended on Jeremy's diving for urchins and scallops. Then came the glass eels, a godsend. They fill a majority of our income, yeah. It's done a lot for a lot of families that haven't, you know, didn't, didn't have anything. It must bring in a lot of money to the local economy, and they spend money at every store. Indeed, Ellsworth has a handsome, healthy downtown, Maine's fastest growing city. Our downtown is vibrant. I mean, there's every storefront is occupied. There's some really great businesses here. As attractive as the storefronts are, they may not tell the whole story. You see this building, it doesn't look like it all that special on the outside and then you come in and there's this gem inside of it. Finn's Irish pub is hiding something inside, a vintage 1930s diner. This is a dining car, Jerry O'Mahony dining car built in 1932. The current building was constructed around the old diner by a former owner. Today the diner serves as the bar at Finn's, likely the only diner ever swallowed up by a restaurant anywhere says current owner, Paul Marcosian. I've never heard of one, yeah. I'd be, yeah, let me know if you find out. I'd love to know. And while we're knocking around town, let's make a call on another unusual spot. Hello, telephone museum. That's right, welcome to the Telephone Museum and the wild and crazy world of interactive switchboards and displays of old-fashioned analog ingenuity. Crazy? Wild? How about intriguing? David Thompson tells us many who come in are completely baffled by the objects in front of them. We have people come in here who are in their 20s, haven't got a clue. Conversely, when it comes to cell phones, Thompson is, unsurprisingly, disconnected. What's that? No, seriously, I don't have a cell phone. <laughs> All right, and back to the eel fisherman. Every eel fisherman actually has a quota that, he, that his, excuse me, every eel fisherman has a quota based on his or her own average landing. landings over time. That's actually a benefit to long term fishermen who generally have bigger quotas right. than the newcomers. Those quotas are in place, of course, to protect the health of the eel fishery and prevent overfishing. Okay. Still